Hello, it's Scott Manley here. Last night, all us space nerds were up watching two things. First of all, there was SpaceX working on their starship in Boca Chica. There might have been some sort of pre-burner test, but over in China, there was big news. There was a live stream for the launch of their Long March 5, or Changzheng 5, carrying a new uh, Chinese crew capsule. This was only the fourth launch of the Long March rockets. The second ever launch had been a failure in 2017, but in December 2019, they demonstrated a successful launch of the Xi'an 20 communication satellite. And so this was the turn of this experimental uh, crew capsule payload and some other stuff. And with that being a success, that presumably affirms their future plans. This summer, they're hoping to launch the Tianwen-1 Mars spacecraft, which will be a combination rover and orbiter. And towards the end of the year, there's the Chang'e 5 lunar lander and sample return mission. But in the long term, 2021 and onwards, it's going to be the Tianwen space station, which will be a multi-part modular space station. Not quite comparable to uh, the International Space Station, much closer to say Mir, uh, this will be a big step forward for China. Unlike most of the other Long March rockets, the Long March 5 uses cryogenic propellants. The core is liquid hydrogen and the four boosters on the outside are burning kerosene and liquid oxygen. On top of the core, there's a second stage, which is also a hydrolock stage. And all of this is able to put maybe 20 tons into low Earth orbit and maybe as much as 14 tons into geostationary transfer orbit. Unlike most of the Long March rockets, the Long March 5 launches from an island from the Wangchang spacecraft launch site, which carries the payloads or the debris and the spent stages out over the ocean so that they don't land on people's property. The primary payload for this mission was a new experimental next generation crew capsule, which is rather unpoetically named Zinyidi Zyron Fishuan Xi'an Chuan, or Next Generation Crewed Spaceship Test. I'm sure that by the time this is carrying crew, it will have a much simpler and more poetic name so that I can say it. For example, the Shenzhou, which this is trying to replace. This spacecraft is the current Chinese crewed spacecraft. It is very similar to a Soyuz. It's actually a licensed copy of the Soyuz, but they scaled it up. They fixed the big problem by expanding the size of the capsule so they, the crew have a little more leg room to work with. It also uses a docking system which is compatible with the international design. Anyway, yeah, this is the old stuff. This capsule, which we don't have a cool name for, is the new stuff. And this is supposed to form the basis for a much more ambitious space program. This design actually comes in two varieties. There's a low orbit variety, which has a smaller service module, and then it has a 20 ton variety with a service module that gives it about maybe 1.9 kilometers per second of delta V based on calculations I've seen. So that means that if this was launched onto a translunar injection, it would be able to put itself into orbit around the moon and then leave orbit and come home. And that capability is a big part of this test flight. When it's gone into initially a low Earth orbit and apparently it's going to then boost itself up into an eccentric orbit that peaks at 8,000 kilometers above the surface and then falls back and re-enters at very high velocity. As of right now, it's sitting in low Earth orbit, presumably doing all the other tests and verifications to make sure that it works. And it will then perform the boost in a few days' time. I believe that the recovery area is in a desert in northern China. The descent uh, will be controlled under parachutes and the shock of the landing will be absorbed by airbags, which means I think SpaceX is going to be the only program, the only crewed space capsule which is using water landing right now. The docking adapter follows international standards. So yeah, in theory, it could dock to the International Space Station, but in practice, of course, it doesn't have all the navigation hardware and all that. Uh, it's designed for six crew or three crew plus 500 kilograms of cargo if they were operating in low Earth orbit. And presumably this would be part of their program to send crew to the moon. Sources have also mentioned that the heat shield is detachable, it's not integrated into the spacecraft, so that it can be easily replaced and this capsule could be reused for multiple flights. 
So obviously, putting this spacecraft into this highly eccentric orbit for the test is quite a big deal because it doesn't happen very often. Most missions are to low Earth orbit. Uh, the, there was a mission for to test the Orion capsule in 2014 that flew on top of a Delta IV Heavy. That did a very similar mission profile and also used an uncrewed capsule. And I think it is actually worth comparing this spacecraft and Orion. Uh, Orion is about 35 tons fully fueled with its service module. This one maxes out at about 20 tons, but it does have more delta V. So it's a smaller spacecraft overall, but actually it's more capable. It can get into low lunar orbit on its own, whereas Orion isn't capable of doing that. But this low lunar orbit capability is obviously looking a long way out to China's you know, announced plans to put people on the surface of the moon, but they're talking about the 2030s for this. But in the near term, China will continue to fly their crews on the Shenzhou, which is launched by the Long March 2F. That spacecraft will carry crew to the Tianhe Space Station for the next decade or so. And I presume at some point they will start testing their next generation capsule in low Earth orbit. And once that's um, you know, spec'd out, once that's working, then they will start pushing out towards the moon. And for those lunar missions, they will need a super heavy capable launch vehicle. That is going to be the Long March 9, which is very much something that's being talked about. Uh, the details are not 100% clear. The spe final spec isn't there, but it will be, you know, capable of matching the Falcon Heavy, uh, probably the SLS. This will be a big rocket capable of conducting campaigns towards the lunar surface and other similar ambitious space programs. But coming back to this mission, there is actually a major secondary payload that's worth talking about, and it goes by the equally poetic name of Ruxing Chongqi Shi Hui Fan Wei Kang Shi Yan Kang, or, and you'll be happy that I do this in English, Flexible Inflatable Cargo Return Module Test Module. It, yeah, uh, I mean, look, this is a cool little thing. It's going to test an inflatable heat shield, and presumably this will deorbit later today, and it will try to target the landing site in the desert in the north of China. Uh, and yeah, this is interesting as a way to return cargo from space. It's obviously a low-density supersonic decelerator alike. I mean, this is very similar to payloads that have been tested by both NASA and the Russian Space Agency. Uh, it'll be interesting to see how this works out. But right now, I think China's quite happy that this launch went off without a hitch after two major failures earlier in the year. It's nice to point to something successful, especially something like the Long March 5, which is going to be carrying the, the bulk of their space station. I'm Scott Manley. Fly safe. Fly <laughs> safe.